What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm bringing you guys another deck profile and this deck is something that I kind of cooked up. I have been testing it online. It's pretty good online. I'm not going to lie. I haven't had the chance to take it to locals or anything yet, but because I want to be completely transparent with you, but this is a really cool idea. Oh, I think it's a really cool idea and it's Horus. Now, I, ever since I picked up this engine, I thought this engine could go really well with ABC and I really wanted to show you guys how to play ABC with the Horus engine. Now, I know this is a build that you guys don't see very often, but I think it could be a very or potentially can be a very, very powerful build. So with that being said, I want to show you guys what the list looks like all right so let's get started with two a assault core three b buster drake and two c crush wyvern this i think is the most standard ratios i don't think i changed this up at all i think it makes sense to just be playing these ones these are kind of like the worst cards in uh your deck and i will say these cards kind of function if you guys have ever played orcus horus these cards function essentially as the orcus card so these are the cards that you're going to be wanting to pitch for your horse monsters because getting them in the graveyard is always going to be good of course there's plays if you do have them in your hand without the horse cards so these cards are still good in general you just don't want to draw like c or a specifically because these don't help you combo b specifically is the best one to draw right so that's why we're playing these ratios i think these are the perfect ratios we're also on two union driver now union driver is very very powerful but you only want to be well the reason you want to be playing two and not one one is because if you do draw the one it can be kind of detrimental you really want to get this off of your union hanger which of course we're playing three union hanger as well so this is it for the abc package but uh that's why you don't want to play the one because if you do draw the one it can be pro kind of problematic and you don't want to be in that situation now there are there is one way around it but i didn't want to rely on that one way so that's why we're still playing the two here and again if you have the second one it doesn't matter it's just fodder that you can pitch off of your horus monsters as well so three union hanger of course this deck does live and die by its field spell so three union hanger very very important we're also playing two Regulus and two Disc Coliseum. The reason for these ratios is one Regulus is an extender for this deck. Essentially, as soon as you have any one of these. So this is kind of how it all combos, all right? I, I'm not going to show you guys a combo specifically because there's so many different hands that you guys can do with this, but I kind of want to show you the, the, the idea. So let's say you open like an Imseti plus like a Regulus plus like a B, right? What you can do is you can use the Imseti, pitch the B pitch itself, get to King Sark, and then uh, you also get to draw a card. And then now you have B set up for Regulus. Let's say you don't open a field spell. So this is kind of how you play around no field spell because you can go... Regulus, summon Regulus, attach B, B summon itself. You can get Imseti back to the field. Then you can kind of link two. Then you can use the B play. At this point, you still haven't used your normal summon. So you can normal summon one of these and kind of have your combos extenders going from there. So that's why Regulus is very good at two. And I think two of the field spell is really good as well. Of course, you need at least a field spell for this deck to be working. So this call the same important and the one terraforming as well. So six copies of these field spells, essentially. And the reason why you need field spells and why field spells are so important is because we are playing the revolution package. So two revolution synchron and three tuning. Now, this this essentially gives you access to ancient fairy dragon and once you have access to ancient fairy dragon you're able to essentially start a lot of your plays ancient fairy dragon of course special summons one of these from hand it gets you to another field spell so if you start with this you can get to this if you get to this or you start with this then you can get to this essentially and then you're always going to be able to have regulus and this is why the field spells are so important because without the field spells this card is kind of mid and we could play three of the name and two tuning it's kind of really up to you guys what you guys prefer i personally like three tuning two revolution synchron but uh those ratios don't matter as much. And these are all the different engines. So as you guys can see with this deck, essentially this deck is just a bunch of good engines that synergize really well with abc right so these are the three main engines that you always see with abc so the revolution stuff the theory on stuff that stuff you're always going to find with abc the horse is kind of where it gets a little bit different so i want to show you guys the horse engine here so again this is the all the i guess machine engine you guys can call it and then the horus engine over here we're playing three m seti one dometer one happy and then we're also playing uh, two King Sark and one Walls of the Imperial Tomb. So the reason we're playing these ratios, I'll, I'll talk about it real quick, is Imseti, of course, is your uh, consistency piece. It gets you to King Sark. It also gets you an extra draw, which is really nice. And then these names, I really like playing two names, um, or three names total, but two separate names, because they're going to help you get into your rank eight plays that this deck otherwise didn't have. They're also technically extenders for you, because they're going to get themselves onto your side of the field. Nothing really machine locks you in this deck. You have access to pretty much everything in your extra deck once you get these on board. So these are all extenders for you as well now the reason we're not playing three king sark we're playing two king sark and one walls walls is actually really good and remember how i was talking about earlier there is a way to kind of circumvent drawing the union driver let's say if you're only playing the one so walls has an effect where you can search in a horse card and then put another card from your hand to your deck and that's kind of how this works so if you do if you only choose to play one and then you have this and then you can put this back so it's not the end of the world the problem with that is because then you're reliant on drawing this with this and i don't like those uh it's, it's very inconsistent right so i don't want to do that this is a really good card again like i said earlier this deck does rely like it lives on its field spell and so even if you open this field spell even if you're not using it for its effect just having that field spell means your uh, revolution synchron is now live right because you have a failed field spell that you can destroy off of your ancient fairy dragon and so that's kind of the consistency with that right and this also also always counts as king sark while it's on the field 
field. So because it counts as king start, you can also still summon these guys back from the graveyard. So that's it for the Horus engine. I think this is just a crazy consistency engine. Being able to send your pieces to the graveyard is really, really powerful. Extra cards in your hand in the to the graveyard is really powerful as well. Even sending a Rev Synchron to the graveyard is really powerful because you can use its graveyard effect as well, right? So these cards are all really, really powerful extenders and they're also big bodies. So they help you push for game in turns two and turns three as well, right? So that's why I really, really like this engine in ABC. And then lastly, we have to play it's just four mat attacks, three Veiler, three Imperm, three Talents, and one Called by the Grave. You need the hand traps to uh, be playing in today's format. In theory, arguably, this can be another hand trap, but I actually just chose to play Tactics. I feel like Tactics going second is really good. Because we're playing the Horus engine, we're not playing Prosperity, and this deck does uh, need its consistency. So this card is actually really good for the draw effect in this deck more than anything. But of course, taking your opponent's monsters, breaking boards with this is always going to be really good if you're going second. Going first, ripping a card out of your opponent's hand is also really powerful, right? So that's why I chose to play this and these are just the best hand traps in the format and that's why we're playing these ones so that's 40 cards on the dot i don't think i'd play more than 40 and the reason i wouldn't play more than 40 is essentially because consistency issues right so uh moving on to the extra deck here uh we're playing two abc i think abc this is all you need the two of them you don't need three if you ever need to go into the third you're kind of in a losing position anyway and because we're not playing prosperity two is perfectly fine one ancient fairy and one crystal wing you're always going to want to end on these guys or end on crystal wing with the ancient fairy dragon i'm not playing baron here that's because i just had to make space for other things but the crystal wing is more than enough because essentially ideally you're always ending on buster plus crystal wing plus an ip at a minimum and then if you do have the horse engine that's when you can get into more negates so having the number 90 having the number 30 eight over here the whole harbinger the galaxy eye is this a monster negate this is a spell negate crystal wing is a monster negate it's not an omni so what i like to do if i do have access to horse engine is end on this plus this because this way we have a monster negate we have a spell negate and then uh, with ip and this you're also having more disruptions as well in that sense right so they're not necessarily negates but more disruptions but these two are going to be your hard negates essentially which is really powerful one sargas as well horus can make sargas if you don't have any access to a Therion monster you can hard make a sargas and then sargas will get you into your Therion, and then you have place from there so regulus is another omni negate for you and that's why we're playing the one uh, one dweller of course just utility a lot of this extra deck you guys are going to see is utility so platinum gadget ip sp unicorn again just all utility cards access code because this deck can make access code like no tomorrow so access code uh one appaloosa as well as one underworld goddess again just different options for you to be playing and uh just really just a bunch of toolbox at the end of the day i think these are just the best toolbox cards but in theory i guess you could play um any real toolbox monsters in the extra deck. So if you don't have access to an SP, because I know SP is a little bit expensive, uh, you guys can cut the SP, play another link monster, it doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, if you're using tactics to take your opponent's monsters, you can use that for link fodder as well. There's just so many different plays you can make, right? So again, just a bunch of toolbox. So I want to show you guys a uh, side deck here. And side deck, I'm always going to say, is up to personal preference and it's really up to what your locals is like so if your locals is a bunch of combo players and fire players make sure to decide for combo and fire if it's a bunch of labyrinth players make sure to decide for that this is kind of a skeleton that you guys can use that's a good into kind of everything so starting off we have three nibiru here nibiru is just really good into the fire matchup and it's just really powerful as well because you're able to break boards really easily with this deck so giving your opponent a big token doesn't really matter and then this is also going to help you push for damage as well right we're playing three ash as well as two bell so again i'm playing talents in the main deck so for that reason i'm playing a lot of the hand traps in the side deck and uh ash i don't like to main anymore just because fire can use it to its advantage there's no actual fire decks in the main or fire cards in the main deck i should say so for that reason they can't go into hita and do all their plays with that so i don't like to play this in the main deck because fire is so prominent but it's really good into branded and other matchups so i like to side it in and then bell as well bell is really good into the fire matchup but it's also really good if uh, against like uh, the bestial dragon link decks and whatnot your monsters are light so if you ever see those bestial uh builds uh, this can kind of stop it it's also just really good against other hand traps dd crow and whatnot as well it's also funny enough really good into voices because um if you bell their pre-prep because pre-prep says from deck or grave so you can actually bell the pre-prep and it's kind of like a disruption in that sense as well so that's a kind of cool interaction then for back row we're playing the harpies as well as three cosmic cyclone just really powerful into today's format so i just really like these cards and then lastly when you are going first or when you are siding in to go first the three solemn judgment solemn judgment is just really powerful because on top of the negates that you're going to be ending on so let's say you're ending on like crystal wing plus a hope harbinger plus an abc if you're ending on this it means that you don't have to use your monster negates you also don't lose the dark ruler which is not really being played right now anyways but you're pretty, pretty much having that extra form of disruption where it's like hey if you do have a board breaker or a way to break my board i'm just saying no to it so that's why i just really like solemn judgment but that's it for the deck um there's really not much else to be said i think it's a really cool concept again this is something that uh I think I need to be putting into more testing, but I just, I really wanted to show you guys this deck because ABC is one of my favorite decks of all time. I know it's a channel favorite, but on top of that, being able to play the Horus engine and doing something kind of unique with it, I think would be really fun. So let me know what you guys think. Um, and thank you Alpha for filming, of course. I appreciate every single one of you guys. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. And with that, thank you. Peace.
get up. We want you to get on your feet.